Um, I was thinking about all the fires around the world that we could talk about, and it seems like China might be the easiest first one to tackle uh, on, uh, on the surge in cases and the restrictions returning and the impact on companies like VW once again cutting their forecast there for the year. I mean, uh, how do you make sense of this, the, the roundabout policy they've been doing the last uh, couple of quarters? Uh, it's interesting phrase you use about the easiest place to start. When I was listening to, I guess it's Eugene, was it? That was uh, you were uh, talking to before. Eunice, sorry. Um, I'm not sure it's very easy because on the one hand, obviously there's clear evidence in the very, very short term um, yeah. that the, the, the spread is building up again and they're shutting down somewhat. But... I think it's against the background of uh, a sort of different... I, I smell or, or detect a different strategic approach to it. I, it feels to me like the government wants to somehow move out of zero COVID strategy. Um, quite how they can do it, uh, given how they've locked themselves into this approach. Uh, one of... I don't know whether it was Eunice or somebody else mentioned about quite rightly how 29,000 for a, a country of 1.4 billion is, is, is non-existent compared with what all of we've gone through. And uh, the, at the core of it, the longer they go on with this policy, the more impossible it becomes for China to deliver its 15-year uh, commitment of doubling GDP per capita. And uh, that would put uh, the, the, the president in an even bigger hole. So. I, I guess what I'm really trying to say is I, I think the whole thing is increasingly unstable as a policy, and I would not at all be surprised by whichever uh, bank you cited there. That I think it might have been ISA, actually, not a bank, that, that they'll be out of it by, by March, because that, that's what I, I detect. And that obviously may require a completely different approach to vaccines and... As I jokingly said at an event about China a few weeks ago here in London, but I, in, in some ways I actually mean it, why don't they do something really radical and decide to import a large number of Western vaccines and just get on with it? Because that would have such powerful uh, sentiment with respect to all the other things that have been going wrong with China and global trade as well. But yeah. I'm not sure President Xi's that bold, but that's what they should do. Yeah, well, we, we'll find out maybe in, in the coming quarters. Of course, that would have huge implications uh, for economies around the world. We just saw the German chancellor, of course, uh, meet with Xi and a lot of discussion yeah. about German-China relations. What's your sense right now about Europe and whether or not you're sensing there the prospect of rapidly declining inflation the way we're talking about in the States? You know, I, I, I smell it's getting closer. I had a, a good uh, look at a number of leading commodity indices um, in preparation for this call, as well as what's been going on with crude. Uh, and, you know, we're not, we're not far off getting to the uh, position where year-over-year -year increases in many commodity prices are, are not that strong anymore. And, of course, across the board, we are significantly down... Uh, from the peaks, and in the case of European gas, crucially, uh, something like 60-odd to 70% from the peak. And so uh, that suggests to me, given the economic slowdown that much of Europe is facing, that the inflationary pressures are probably waning. And, you, you know, I think when I was last on with you guys, we talked about it in the US, it's been quite clear to me for a while that the, the conditions for it turning were building. So... I, I suspect, short of some whole new horrific energy uh, shut-off, uh, we, we might be on the verge of seeing more signs of it turning in more places. Obviously, I hope I'm, my hunch is right. Yeah, I mean, Jim, certainly the, the commodity uh, element of inflation seems to be cooperating, but I, you wonder if the Federal Reserve is willing to, to give that any room to, uh, to operate without seeing the labor market soften up and all the things they've been pointing to. I mean, don't fight the Fed's been the only rule you really needed for most of this year.